The next book I have, oh, Bramble. This is the troublemaker. This is the troublemaker. Why are you so loud? Hi hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kelly. I am filming the most casual wrap up right now because let's chill, let's talk about books. I read five books in January, so let's just get started. I won't talk about these books in really any order, just the order in which I've read them. The first book I read this year, wow, is Nura and the Immortal Palace. This is by M.T. Khan. This is a middle grade fantasy and I typically don't read middle grade fantasy, but I saw the author in real life and I love hearing authors talk about their writing journey and their writing process because I am an author myself, so I had to buy the book. What is this even about? So this book is about our main character called Nura, who's who comes from a very poor village in Pakistan. In order to make more money, Nira actually works and she works in the mines, mining this mineral called mica, I believe, M-I-C-A. But one day when Nira is trying to mine more, she accidentally triggers a cavern collapse. And during this cavern collapse, her best friend kind of disappears. The authorities can't find him, so she decides to go look for him herself. And she stumbles upon a jinn world. So she gets transported to the spirited away jinn world where a bunch of jinn are running a hotel. And that's pretty much where the plot starts. I thought that this book was extremely hard-hitting, especially for middle grade. It talks about poverty um, in many levels. So once we reach the hotel setting, the author does a lot more examination of poverty and why like cycles of child labor can keep going on. And another really important message that this book is trying to bring is education. And education, I think, works both ways. It works on the people who are kind of like reaping the benefits of child labor because with education, like we can understand where our stuff comes from. And I think this is very important because fast fashion is so popular these days. And I'm not saying I'm not a consumer of fast fashion, but we don't really think like, where is this coming from? And this can also apply to like really cheap products we find on Amazon. Um, so education in the sense that we should also be aware of what we're buying and where the source is. And education also helps the child laborers themselves. The children can keep going to school and hopefully better opportunities can come. I really like the themes of this book. Nura is a very strong character for a 12 year old. She goes through this like crazy journey. I love the hotel, um, the way the author crafted three really cool elements. <laughs> I don't want to spoil too much, but there's like three specific wings of the hotel. I thought that was really creative. The author brings her own background and culture into this book. I learned a lot about Islamic culture. There's a mention of Eid in this book and all the food that the characters are eating in this hotel. It was just so yummy. So I highly recommend, especially if you don't really read middle grade and you also get this perspective that we don't typically see in like Western storytelling. The next book I read this month is Entangled Life by Merlin Sheldrake. How fungi make our worlds change our minds and shape culture. I loved this so much. It's a five star. I thought that this book taught me so much about fungi. Merlin Sheldrake is just so passionate about this and you can get that from the intro. I felt like I was at my college's at the end of this book. So in this book, you kind of get everything from what they are, how they kind of communicate, um, the different usages of mushrooms, including psychedelics, which Honestly, that part of the chapter or part of the book was so entertaining because there are some people who are huge proponents, huge, what's the word, like advocates of psychedelic drugs. Also, look at this. Uh, these are carpenter ants being infested with fungi and it's crazy because every fungus that infests these ants, they do the exact same thing. So it's so robotic, it's really so zombie-like, and it's so cool. There are so many ways that fungus and fungi like are in our lives, we just don't really notice. Even our gut is made up of mostly fungi fungus. 
fungi. Look at this chart here. This is a placebo, normal, non-high on psychedelics. And look at this one. It's going crazy. It's everywhere. Not that I've done shrooms before. Or have I? But that's crazy. And it kind of like... So many people in history, especially in like these different ancient civilizations, all were like high on shrooms. It kind of makes me very curious about them. I really like these flowers if you can call them flowers they used to be flowers or they used to photosynthesize but they relied so much on fungus that they lost their ability to photosynthesize fungi is just everywhere in the soil oh this part oh this is the coolest thing i think i learned this is a map of the fungal networks this is like the whole forest and it just spans a huge huge area and they're all interconnected fungus they pass information from one thing to another they help trees talk <laughs> and it's just crazy how how little we know about them every single chapter ended with something like we don't really know the answer to this but we will find out there are people working on it i kind of want to make my own kombucha i want to be more aware of the fungi in my life um actually really funny i have plants in the house and sometimes not sometimes. This one time my friend was helping me water my plants. I think she overwatered them a little bit because when I came back, there was like mushrooms on my plants and I was like kind of freaked out. But after I read this and I thought about that scenario, I was like, that's actually so cool. I felt like I didn't, I just felt like I didn't really appreciate them. I thought they were like a pest. And I think they were a disease in that perspective, but I could still admire them, right? The art. This is the dog that helps hunt uh, for truffles. They used to use pigs, I think, back in the day, but they don't, they're not very good at it, actually. And this dog is called uh, Kika. Just super, super cute. And look at these mushrooms that glow in the dark. There's just so much to know. Oh, yeah. The author wants us to see the world in a more, like, fungi perspective. We see the world in trees. Uh, trees is, like, a very... Like the structure of trees, we use that to describe various things. In computer science, there's this thing called like binary search tree. But because fungi is like so small and we don't really see it, I feel like we just don't associate seeing things like growing like fungi. And there's this very interesting chart here. I love these photos and I love how I can reference them and I can still remember. I highly suggest all nonfiction to have these. Um, so here's like another example. So this is a fungus. This is food. So the fungus like kind of grows everywhere. But once it finds the food, it starts chipping away at the other like uh, networks, um, connections, and it just ends up going to the food. So cool. Very cool. I love this whole book. There are some fungus that can um, decompose like nuclear waste. No, cigarette butts. But there is this like other crazy chemical that it can decompose and at the end of the book the author was talking about different functions of fungi and people want to create furniture with fungus because they can grow like organically and they can also decompose themselves very cool very cool i have a new found love for mycology and if you want me to kind of like walk you through some of the stuff i was reading you can check out my 24 hour readathon i was just like talking aloud and thinking aloud of everything I was reading at the time. So, amazing book. I love it so much. I'm hoping I can meet Merlin Sheldrake. He seems like such a fun person. He literally referenced like every single author I read, <laughs> like every nonfiction author I read. He mentions Robin Wall Kimmerer. He mentions Michael Pollan. He mentions Richard Schultz, I think I have one of his textbooks actually. Uh, so I had a lot of fun. As you can tell, I ranted a lot. Definitely check out this one if you're curious. If you want to get into nonfiction because of the photos, it really helps. I did have a lot of questions though. Like while I was reading this, I was constantly Googling just because there was, there was so much information that I wanted to know more. Um, but I felt like I, like I would have loved taking a course on this. Like if this was a textbook and Merlin Sheldrake was the professor and went through like each chapter per lecture, I would have so many questions. So I think 
maybe you will have some questions yourself, but don't let that stop you from reading this because I did Google a lot of things on my own. I Googled the life cycle of a mushroom. I watched some videos, but I had a lot of fun like watching those videos and I had a lot of fun just like looking things up on my own. So I recommend and I would love to meet Merlin Sheldrake. Next book I read this one, The Android's Dream of Electric Sheep by Philip K. Dick. This was the book that inspired the Blade Runner movies. I am a science fiction writer, so my goal for this year is to really read through like all the staples in sci-fi and all the classics. This is for sure one of them. It actually looks kind of scary. Like this is an android. It's actually much creepier on the camera than like when I look at it in person. So this is a novella, clearly it's pretty short, and it's about our main character called Richard who is an android hunter. He calls his job like retiring androids. So in this far, far future, um, Earth has become a pretty bad place to live. There's a kind of like a sickness that had infected certain people. I think it was because of like some nuclear thing left over. And most people are living on Mars now. And androids are there as servants slash slaves to help the people on Mars. If these androids escape Mars, then our main character Richard, he hunts them down hunts them down and retires them. That's really all I'm gonna say about this book. Uh, pretty much, as I mentioned, the character, our main character, Richard, is just hunting androids. I was, I think, slightly underwhelmed by this book. I liked it in like a conceptual sense. Uh, I really loved the themes on organic versus not. Also in this book, um, people don't really have pets because anything organic is very rare. So people who do have pets, uh, they pay a lot of money for the pets and the pets are actually considered like a car, you can lease them out. And our main character and his wife they have an electric sheep because they can't afford a real sheep. The first chapter is the main character just like admiring a real horse that one of his neighbors have and he's just super super jealous because he doesn't have a real animal. And this title is very interesting because androids aren't organic but they are sentient so would they dream of electric sheep or would they also want a real sheep? Very very cool, I love the play. Love the play of this title. I didn't really mention this in the summary, but there also is another perspective aside from Richard. And the other perspective we have is one of the characters that he has this nuclear thing like in him that makes his IQ a little bit lower. And it's very interesting because although being organic is like a very good thing to have and people want to have, you know, these real sheeps, but the way that people treat the ones who have this thing they're treated kind of badly. What's the name? I forgot. Obviously, I'm glad I read this. It's not gonna be far until we have androids ourselves. Water break. The next book I read this month is Cold the Night, Fast the Wolves by Meg Long. This is a YA science fiction. I actually also teared up reading this, so I do have a soft spot for this book. I haven't or I rarely read YA sci-fi that's like not about a dystopian government that the main character is trying to overtake. This book is set on an icy planet called Tundar and we follow our main character. Her name is Sina, S-E-N-A or Shauna. I think it's Sina. On this planet, a race happens every year in the summer where people from all over the galaxy come and race across the planet to mine this mineral called exocarbon. Exocarbon is very rare and it's used for like all the technologies. And our main character, Sina, doesn't want anything to do with the race, but she kind of accidentally gets pulled in it when she agrees to help a group of scientists get across the ice. So I love this book because I love 
The Animal Companion. This book is pretty much like Balto, where you have wolves that pull sleds, and that's what the actual race is. So every team has like a set of Volnan wolves, that's what they're called, to pull the sleds. And I love animals. So you can expect Animal Companion in this. The setting in this world is so alive. You're so immersed in it. The author does such a great job at incorporating like the weather that makes you feel like you're in the book, the plants, the way you feel when you're in the cold. As someone who lives in Canada, I would know and I felt that and I thought that was awesome. Our character is also kind of like half indigenous. So I love the knowledge she has of the planet and she knows everything about the electric storms, how to spot one, how to survive in the wild. I loved all that. It's really fun to read. Like the whole book is really fun to read if you're looking for a young adult sci-fi that has like a lot of emphasis on world building, then I definitely recommend this one. The last book we're gonna talk about is Farewell to Arms by Ernest Hemingway. I read this book because I want to be a part of Emma and Carolyn's Book of Tomes book club. I am going to have a separate reading vlog on the story where I go into the tabs and I explain my thoughts. It's completely a spoiler. This is my third Ernest Hemingway book. I read Old Man and the Sea and I read The Sun Also Rises back in high school. But I would say this is like my first official Hemingway book. One of his biggest trademarks is his use of very curt sentences or sentences that have everything stripped away so you just get the meaning. So it becomes very truthful, it becomes really direct. I had a fun time exploring his writing style and falling in love with it. There are some descriptions where because it's so stripped down, you get like all the emotional feels, but it's also like kind of strange because not all the sentences are like complete sentences. I didn't even say what this book is about. Oh my god, okay. This book is about our main character. His name is Frederick Henry. He is an American serving as an ambulance driver for the Italian army in World War One, And that's really what the book is about. I don't typically read a lot of like war army books, um, but I'm glad I did with this one. This whole book is like one giant anti-war. I knew that about Hemingway before I started reading this, but after reading this, this is like really solidified how much war sucks <laughs> and how much I feel for all the soldiers and the veterans. Ernest Hemingway actually had a really funny introduction to this book uh, where he's just saying that if he accidentally started a war with this book, then he would willingly be shot by a firing squad. Uh, Ernest Hemingway is also so funny. I laugh so hard throughout different parts of this book. Um, and I'm really glad I read this. I'm really glad I did. The ending, whew, the ending is brutal. So I'll have more spoilery, spoilery thoughts in my reading vlog. It's still like a little bit strange because it takes me a while to kind of rate books. Sometimes like I can easily get a feeling, but for this one, I'm still steeping. Like my mind is still like trying to process this whole book. So I don't really have a rating rating yet for myself but I do have a lot of positive thoughts, as in like, it is a really good book. If you're looking to get into a classic, I don't think this is a bad one to start. And you can also follow along <laughs> in my reading vlog that I will be posting very shortly after this. That's it for this video. I feel like I talked long enough. Let me know what books you read in January, which book did you love reading the most, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!